the Soviet Union, officially the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, was a transcontinental country that spanned much of Eurasia from 1922 to 1991. A flagship communist state, it was nominally a federal union of 15 national republics, in practice, both its government and its economy were highly centralized until its final years. It was a one-party state governed by the Communist Party of the Soviet Union, with the city of Moscow serving as its capital as well as that of its largest and most populous republic, the Russian SFSR. Other major cities included Leningrad, Kiev, Minsk, Tashkent, Almaty, and Novosibirsk. It was the largest country in the world, covering over 22,402,200 square kilometers and spanning 11 time zones. The country's roots lay in the October Revolution of 1917, when the Bolsheviks, under the leadership of Vladimir Lenin, overthrew the Russian provisional government that had earlier replaced the House of Romanov of the Russian Empire. The Bolshevik victory established the Russian Soviet Republic, the world's first constitutionally guaranteed socialist state. Persisting internal tensions escalated into the Russian Civil War. By 1922 the Bolsheviks under Vladimir Lenin had emerged victorious, forming the Soviet Union. Following Lenin's death in 1924, Joseph Stalin came to power. Stalin inaugurated a period of rapid industrialization and forced collectivization that led to significant economic growth, but also contributed to a famine in 1930-1933 that killed millions. The labor camp system of the Gulag was also expanded in this period. Stalin conducted the Great Purge to remove his actual and perceived opponents. After the outbreak of World War II, Germany invaded the Soviet Union. The combined Soviet civilian and military casualty count estimated to be around 27 million people accounted for the majority of losses of Allied forces. In the aftermath of World War II, the territory taken by the Red Army formed various Soviet satellite states. The beginning of the Cold War saw the Eastern Bloc of the Soviet Union confront the Western Bloc of the United States, with the latter grouping becoming largely united in 1949 under NATO and the former grouping becoming largely united in 1955 under the Warsaw Pact. Following Stalin's death in 1953, a period known as de-Stalinization occurred under the leadership of Nikita Khrushchev. The Soviets took an early lead in the space race with the first artificial satellite, the first human spaceflight, and the first probe to land on another planet. In the 1970s, there was a brief detente in the Soviet Union's relationship with the United States, but tensions resumed following the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan in 1979. In the mid-1980s, the last Soviet leader, Mikhail Gorbachev, sought to reform the country through his policies of glasnost and perestroika. In 1989, during the closing stages of the Cold War, various countries of the Warsaw Pact overthrew their Marxist-Leninist regimes, which was accompanied by the outbreak of strong nationalist and separatist movements across the entire Soviet Union. In 1991, Gorbachev initiated a national referendum boycotted by the Soviet republics of Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia, Armenia, Georgia, and Moldova that resulted in the majority of participating citizens voting in favor of preserving the country as a renewed federation. In August 1991, hardline members of the Communist Party staged a coup d'état against Gorbachev, the attempt failed with Boris Yeltsin playing a high-profile role in facing down the unrest, and the Communist Party was subsequently banned. All of the republics emerged from the dissolution of the Soviet Union as fully independent post-Soviet states. The Soviet Union produced many significant social and technological achievements and innovations. It had the world's second-largest economy and the Soviet armed forces comprised the largest standing military in the world. An NPT-designated state, it possessed the largest arsenal of nuclear weapons in the world. 
It was a founding member of the United Nations as well as one of the five permanent members of the United Nations Security Council. Before the dissolution, the country had maintained its status as one of the world's two superpowers through its hegemony in Eastern Europe, military and economic strengths, aid to developing countries, and scientific research. Background 1985, Gorbachev elected Mikhail Gorbachev was elected General Secretary by the Politburo on March 11, 1985, just over four hours after his predecessor Konstantin Chernenko died at the age of 73. Gorbachev, aged 54, was the youngest member of the Politburo. His initial goal as General Secretary was to revive the stagnating Soviet economy and he realized that doing so would require reforming underlying political and social structures. The reforms began with personnel changes of senior Brezhnev-era officials who would impede political and economic change. On April 23, 1985, Gorbachev brought two protégés, Yegor Ligachev and Nikolai Rizhikov, into the Politburo as full members. He kept the power ministries favorable by promoting KGB chief Viktor Chebrikov from candidate to full member and appointing Minister of Defense Marshal Sergei Sokolov as a Politburo candidate. That liberalization, however, fostered nationalist movements and ethnic disputes within the Soviet Union. It also led indirectly to the revolutions of 1989 in which Soviet imposed socialist regimes of the Warsaw Pact were toppled peacefully which in turn increased pressure on Gorbachev to introduce greater democracy and autonomy for the Soviet Union's constituent republics. Under Gorbachev's leadership, the Communist Party of the Soviet Union in 1989 introduced limited competitive elections to a new central legislature, the Congress of People's Deputies. On July 1, 1985, Gorbachev sidelined his main rival by removing Grigory Romanov from the Politburo and brought Boris Yeltsin into the Central Committee Secretariat. On December 23, 1985, Gorbachev appointed Yeltsin first secretary of the Moscow Communist Party replacing Viktor Grishin. 1986, Sakharov returns. Gorbachev continued to press for greater liberalization. On December 23, 1986, the most prominent Soviet dissident, Andrei Sakharov, returned to Moscow shortly after receiving a personal telephone call from Gorbachev telling him that after almost seven years his internal exile for defying the authorities was over. 1987, One Party Democracy At the 2830 January 1987, Central Committee Plenum, Gorbachev suggested a new policy of democratizatsiya throughout Soviet society. He proposed that future Communist Party elections should offer a choice between multiple candidates, elected by secret ballot. However, the party delegates at the plenum watered down Gorbachev's proposal, and democratic choice within the Communist Party was never significantly implemented. Gorbachev also radically expanded the scope of Glasnost and stated that no subject was off-limits for open discussion in the media. On February 7, 1987, dozens of political prisoners were freed in the first group release since the Khrushchev thaw in the mid-1950s. On September 10, 1987, Boris Yeltsin wrote a letter of resignation to Gorbachev. At the October 27, 1987, plenary meeting of the Central Committee, Yeltsin, frustrated that Gorbachev had not addressed any of the issues outlined in his resignation letter, criticized the slow pace of reform and servility to the General Secretary. In his reply, Gorbachev accused Yeltsin of political immaturity and absolute irresponsibility. Nevertheless, news of Yeltsin's insubordination and secret speech spread, and soon Sami's dot versions began to circulate. That marked the beginning of Yeltsin's rebranding as a rebel and rise in popularity as an anti-establishment figure. The following four years of political struggle between Yeltsin and Gorbachev played a large role in the dissolution of the Soviet Union. On November 11, 1987, 
Yeltsin was fired from the post of first secretary of the Moscow Communist Party. Protest Activity In the years leading up to the dissolution, various protests and resistance movements occurred or took hold throughout the Soviet Union, which were variously suppressed or tolerated. The CTAG Helsinki 86 was founded in July 1986 in the Latvian port town of Lipja. Helsinki 86 was the first openly anti-communist organization in the USSR, and the first openly organized opposition to the Soviet regime, setting an example for other ethnic minorities pro-independence movements. On December 26, 1986, 300 Latvian youths gathered in Riga's Cathedral Square and marched down Lenin Avenue toward the Freedom Monument, shouting, Soviet Russia out! Free Latvia! Security forces confronted the marchers, and several police vehicles were overturned. The Jeltoxan of 1986 were riots in Almaty, Kazakhstan, sparked by Gorbachev's dismissal of Din Mukhamed Kunev, the first secretary of the Communist Party of Kazakhstan and an ethnic Kazakh, who was replaced with Gennady Kalbin, an outsider from the Russian SFSR. Demonstrations started in the morning of December 17, 1986, with 200 to 300 students in front of the Central Committee building on Brezhnev Square. On the next day, December 18, protests turned into civil unrest as clashes between troops, volunteers, militia units and Kazakh students turned into a wide-scale confrontation. The clashes could only be controlled on the third day. On May 6, 1987, Paymayat, a Russian nationalist group, held an unsanctioned demonstration in Moscow. The authorities did not break up the demonstration and even kept traffic out of the demonstrators' way while they marched to an impromptu meeting with Boris Yeltsin. On July 25, 1987, 300 Crimean Tatars staged a noisy demonstration near the Kremlin Wall for several hours calling for the right to return to their homeland, from which they were deported in 1944, police and soldiers looked on. On August 23, 1987, the 48th anniversary of the secret protocols of the 1939 Molotov Pact, thousands of demonstrators marked the occasion in the three Baltic capitals to sing independence songs and attend speeches commemorating Stalin's victims. The gatherings were sharply denounced in the official press and closely watched by the police but were not interrupted. On June 14, 1987, about 5,000 people gathered again at Freedom Monument in Riga, and laid flowers to commemorate the anniversary of Stalin's mass deportation of Latvians in 1941. The authorities did not crack down on demonstrators, which encouraged more and larger demonstrations throughout the Baltic states. On November 18, 1987, hundreds of police and civilian militiamen cordoned off the Central Square to prevent any demonstration at Freedom Monument, but thousands lined the streets of Riga in silent protest regardless. On October 17, 1987, about 3,000 Armenians demonstrated in Yerevan complaining about the condition of Lake Sevan, the Narit Chemicals Plant, and the Metsamor Nuclear Power Plant and air pollution in Yerevan. Police tried to prevent the protest but took no action to stop it once the march was underway. The following day 1,000 Armenians participated in another demonstration calling for Armenian national rights in Karabakh and the annexation of Nakhchivan and Nagorno-Karabakh to Armenia. The police tried to physically prevent the march and after a few incidents, dispersed the demonstrators. Timeline 1988. Moscow loses control. Baltic republics. Rebellion in the Caucasus. Western republics. 1989. Moscow, limited democratization. Baltic chain of freedom. Caucasus. Western republics. Strike action of Kuzbis and Donbass miners. Central Asian republics. 1990. Moscow loses six republics. Rivalry between USSR and RSFSR. Baltic republics. 
Caucasus, Western Republics, Central Asian Republics, 1991, Moscow's Crisis, Russia's President Boris Yeltsin, The Caucasus, Georgia takes the lead, Baltic Republics, August coup, Fall, August to December, Consequences, Economic decline, in the decades following the end of the Cold War, only five or six of the post-Soviet states are on a path to joining the wealthy capitalist states of the West, and most are falling behind, some to such an extent that over 50 years will be needed before they catch up to how they were before the end of communism. However, virtually all the former Soviet republics were able to turn their economies around and increase GDP to multiple times what it was under the USSR. In a 2001 study by the economist Stephen Rosifielda, he calculated that there were 3.4 million premature deaths in Russia from 1990 to 1998, which he partly blames on the shock therapy that came with the Washington Consensus. Post-Soviet Conflicts According to the scholar Marcel H. Van Herpen, the end of the Soviet Union also marked the end of Russian colonialism and imperialism. As the Soviet Union began to collapse, social disintegration and political instability fueled a surge in ethnic conflict. Social and economic disparities, along with ethnic differences, created an upsurge in nationalism within groups and discrimination between groups. In particular, Disputes over territorial boundaries have been the source of conflict between states experiencing political transition and upheaval. Territorial conflicts can involve several different issues, the reunification of ethnic groups which have been separated, restoration of territorial rights to those who experienced forced deportation, and restoration of boundaries arbitrarily changed during the Soviet era. Territorial disputes remain significant points of controversy as minority groups consistently oppose election outcomes and seek autonomy and self-determination. In addition to territorial disputes and other structural causes of conflict, legacies from the Soviet and pre-Soviet eras, along with the suddenness of the actual socio-political change, have resulted in conflict throughout the region. As each group experiences dramatic economic reform and political democratization, there has been a surge in nationalism and inter-ethnic conflict. Overall, the 15 independent states that emerged after the collapse of the Soviet Union face problems stemming from uncertain identities, contested boundaries, apprehensive minorities, and an overbearing Russian hegemony. Russia under Vladimir Putin who has termed the dissolution of the USSR as the greatest geopolitical catastrophe of the 20th century, began to revive Russian nationalism and Urdentism, leading them to invade Georgia in 2008, Ukraine in 2014 and Ukraine again in 2022. Special Period and Dollarization of Cuba The Special Period officially known as the Special Period in the Time of Peace was an extended period of economic crisis in Cuba that began in 1991 it was defined primarily by extreme reductions of rationed foods at state-subsidized prices, the severe shortages of hydrocarbon energy resources in the form of gasoline, diesel, and other petroleum derivatives that occurred upon the implosion of economic agreements between the petroleum-rich Soviet Union and Cuba, and the shrinking of an Economy overdependent on Soviet imports. During its existence, the Soviet Union provided Cuba with large amounts of oil, food, and machinery. In the years following the collapse of the Soviet Union, Cuba's gross domestic product shrunk 35%, imports and exports both fell over 80%, and many domestic industries shrank considerably. In a speculated attempt to rejoin the IMF and the World Bank, Executive Director Jacques de Groot and another IMF official were invited to Havana in late 1993. After assessing the economic situation in the country they concluded that from 1989 to 1993, the Cuba's economic decline was more grave than that experienced by any other socialist Eastern European country. In 1993 a series of economic reforms began to go into effect 
initially enacted to offset the economic imbalances which was a result of the dissolution of the Soviet Union in 1991. The main aspect of these reforms was to legalize the then illegal US dollar and regulate its usage in the island's economy. North Korean Famine In 1991, when the Soviet Union dissolved, it ended all aid and trade concessions such as cheap oil to North Korea. Without Soviet aid, the flow of imports to the North Korean agricultural sector ended, and the government proved to be too inflexible to respond. Energy imports fell by 75 percent. The economy went into a downward spiral, with imports and exports falling in tandem. Flooded coal mines required electricity to operate pumps, and the shortage of coal worsened the shortage of electricity. Agriculture reliant on electrically powered irrigation systems, artificial fertilizers and pesticides was hit particularly hard by the economic collapse. Sports and Unified Team The breakup of the Soviet Union saw a massive impact in the sporting world. Before its dissolution, the Soviet football team had just qualified for Euro 1992, but its place was instead taken by the CIS national football team. After the tournament, the former Soviet republics competed as separate independent nations, with FIFA allocating the Soviet team's record to Russia. Before the start of the 1992 Winter Olympics in Albertville and the Summer Olympics in Barcelona, the Olympic Committee of the Soviet Union formally existed until March 12, 1992, when it disbanded but it was succeeded by the Russian Olympic Committee. However, 12 of the 15 former Soviet republics competed together as the unified team and marched under the Olympic flag in Barcelona where they finished first in the medal rankings. Separately, Lithuania, Latvia, and Estonia also competed as independent nations in the 1992 Games. The unified team also competed in Albertville earlier in the year and finished second in the medal ranking at those Games. Afterwards, the individual NOCs of the non-Baltic former republics were established. Some NOCs made their debuts at the 1994 Winter Olympic Games in Lillehammer, and others did so at the 1996 Summer Olympic Games in Atlanta. Members of the unified team at the 1992 Summer Olympics in Barcelona consisted of Armenia, Azerbaijan, Belarus, Georgia, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Moldova, Russia, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, Ukraine, and Uzbekistan. At those Summer Games, the unified team secured 45 gold medals, 38 silver medals, and 29 bronze medals, 4 medals more than 2nd place United States, and 30 more than 3rd place Germany. In addition to great team success, the unified team also saw great personal success. Vitaly Skerbo of Belarus secured six gold medals for the team in gymnastics and also became the most decorated athlete of the Summer Games. Gymnastics, athletics, wrestling, and swimming were the strongest sports for the team, as the four combined earned 28 gold medals and 64 medals in total. Only six of the countries competed earlier at the 1992 Winter Olympics in Albertville, Armenia, Belarus, Kazakhstan, Russia, Ukraine, and Uzbekistan. The unified team placed second, three fewer medals than Germany. However, much like the Summer Games, the unified team had the most decorated medalist in the Winter Games as well, with Lyubov Yegorova of Russia, a cross-country skier winning five total medals. Telecommunications the Soviet Union's calling code of plus seven is still used by Russia and Kazakhstan. Between 1993 and 1997, many newly independent republics implemented their own numbering plans such as Belarus and Ukraine. The Internet domain .sur remains in use alongside the Internet domains of the newly created countries. Glasnost and Memorial the lifting of total censorship and communist propaganda led to disclosure to public of such political and historical issues as the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact, the Katyn Massacre, revision of the Stalinist repressions, 
revision of the Russian Civil War, the White Movement, the New Economic Policy, the 1986 Chernobyl disaster, censorship, pacification and procrastination by the Soviet authorities. In 1989, the Soviet Union established a civil rights society, Memorial, which specialized in research and recovery of memory for victims of political repressions as well as support for a general human rights movement. Chronology of Declarations States with limited recognition are shown in italics. Legacy In 2013, the American Gallup Analytics Company found that a majority of citizens in four former Soviet countries regretted the dissolution of the Soviet Union, Armenia, Kyrgyzstan, Russia, and Ukraine. In Armenia, 12% of respondents in 2013 said the Soviet collapse did good while 66% said it did harm. In Kyrgyzstan, 16% of respondents in 2013 said the Soviet collapse did good, while 61% said it did harm. Ever since the Soviet collapse, annual polling by the Levada Center has shown that over 50% of Russia's population regretted its collapse. Consistently, 57% of citizens of Russia regretted the collapse of the Soviet Union in a poll in 2014, and in 2018 a Levada Center poll showed that 66% of Russians lamented the fall of the Soviet Union. In a similar poll held in February 2005, 50% of respondents in Ukraine stated they regretted the disintegration of the Soviet Union. In 2013, according to Gallup, 56% of Ukrainians said that the dissolution of the Soviet Union did more harm than good, with only 23% saying it did more good than harm. However, a similar poll conducted in 2016 by a Ukrainian group showed only 35% Ukrainians regretting the Soviet collapse and 50% not regretting it. The breakdown of economic ties that followed the Soviet collapse led to a severe economic crisis and catastrophic fall in the standard of living in post-Soviet states and the former Eastern Bloc, which was even worse than the Great Depression. An estimated 7 million premature deaths took place in the former USSR after it collapsed, with around 4 million in Russia alone. Poverty and economic inequality surged between 1988 and 1989 and between 1993 and 1995, with the Gini ratio increasing by an average of 9 points for all former socialist countries. Even before the 1998 Russian financial crisis, the Russian GDP was half of what it had been in the early 1990s. By 1999, around 191 million people in post-Soviet states and former Eastern Bloc countries and were living on less than $5.50 a day. In the kitchen debate of 1959, Nikita Khrushchev claimed that then U.S. Vice President Richard Nixon's grandchildren would live under communism, and Nixon claimed that Khrushchev's grandchildren would live under freedom. In a 1992 interview, Nixon commented that during the debate, he was sure Khrushchev's claim was wrong, but Nixon was not sure that his own assertion was correct. Nixon said that events had proved that he was indeed right because Khrushchev's grandchildren now lived in freedom in reference to the recent end of the Soviet Union. Khrushchev's son Sergei Khrushchev was a naturalized American citizen. United Nations Membership in a letter dated December 24, 1991, Boris Yeltsin, the Russian president, informed the United Nations Secretary-General that the membership of the Soviet Union in the Security Council and all other UN organs would be continued by the Russian Federation with the support of the 11 member countries of the Commonwealth of Independent States. However, the Belarusian Soviet Socialist Republic and the Ukrainian Soviet Socialist Republic had already joined the UN as original members on October 24, 1945, together with the Soviet Union. After declaring independence, the Ukrainian Soviet Socialist Republic changed its name to Ukraine on August 24, 1991, and on September 19, 
the Belarusian Soviet Socialist Republic informed the UN that it had changed its name to the Republic of Belarus. All of the 12 other independent states that were established from the former Soviet republics were admitted to the UN. September 17, 1991, Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania. March 2, 1992, Armenia, Azerbaijan, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Moldova, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan and Uzbekistan. July 31, 1992, Georgia. Historiographic explanations. Historiography on the Soviet collapse can be roughly classified in two groups, intentionalist accounts and structuralist accounts. Intentionalist accounts contend that Soviet collapse was not inevitable and resulted from the policies and decisions of specific individuals, usually Gorbachev and Yeltsin. One characteristic example of intentionalist writing is the historian Archie Brown's The Gorbachev Factor, which argues Gorbachev was the main force in Soviet politics at least from 1985 to 1988 and even later and that he largely spearheaded the political reforms and developments, as opposed to being led by events. That was especially true of the policies of perestroika and glasnost, market initiatives and foreign policy stance as the political scientist George Breslauer has seconded by labeling Gorbachev a man of the events. In a slightly different vein, David Kotz and Fred Weir have contended that Soviet elites were responsible for spurring on both nationalism and capitalism from which they could personally benefit, which is demonstrated also by their continued presence in the higher economic and political echelons of post-Soviet republics. In contrast, Structuralist accounts take a more deterministic view in which Soviet dissolution was an outcome of deeply rooted structural issues, which planted a time bomb. For example, Edward Walker has argued that minority nationalities were denied power at the union level, confronted by a culturally destabilizing form of economic modernization, and subjected to a certain amount of Russification but they were at the same time strengthened by several policies pursued by the Soviet government. Over time, they created conscious nations. Furthermore, the basic legitimating myth of the Soviet federative system eased the task of secession and independence. On January 25, 2016, Russian President Vladimir Putin supported that view by calling Lenin's support of the right of secession for the Soviet republics a delayed action bomb. An opinion piece by Gorbachev in April 2006 stated, The nuclear meltdown at Chernobyl 20 years ago this month, even more than my launch of perestroika, was perhaps the real cause of the collapse of the Soviet Union. The end of the Soviet Union caught many people by surprise. Before 1991, many thought that Soviet collapse was impossible or unlikely. It also had a profound impact on the policy-making circles of the Chinese Communist Party, in particular on CCP General Secretary Xi Jinping, who states why did the Soviet Union disintegrate? Why did the Communist Party of the Soviet Union fall from power? An important reason was that the struggle in the field of ideology was extremely intense, completely negating the history of the Soviet Union, negating the history of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union, negating Lenin, negating Stalin, creating historical nihilism and confused thinking. Party organs at all levels had lost their functions, the military was no longer under party leadership. In the end, the Communist Party of the Soviet Union, a great party, was scattered, the Soviet Union, a great socialist country, disintegrated. This is a cautionary tale. See also